So, yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Chao Gao. I'm the Associate Professor of uh, Norwegian University of Science and Technology. So, today my topics will introduce about the structure integrity of additive manufactured components. I will focus on the polymer components. So, I hope you will like uh, these topics and uh, I will share my experience on it. So, yes. First of all, what's the additive manufacturing? So, uh, we are all familiar with the concept like the 3D printing, which is a popular concept in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the world. But more accurate uh, uh, definitions of that, uh, I choose from the ASTM standard, it's, it's a very accurate definitions of additive manufacturing. It's a process of drawing materials to make objects from three dimensional models later, usually layer upon layer, as of Subtractive manufacturing. So here I would like to highlight the three uh, keywords. First is the uh, manufacturing process of the of the of the of the three D printing or the manufacturing. And normally it's produced the uh, the fabricated examples layer by layer. Of course nowadays uh, it will have like uh, uh, technologies three uh, three D printing technologies to fabricate in postings instead of layer by layer. But the majority of the market will use the layer upon layer technologies. To fabricate our objectives, and then the third the keyword is it's subjected to the uh, it's subjected to the subjective manufacturing technologies. So that's our our most favorite I mean, that's the uh, technologies nowadays. And here I would like to take take uh, take one of the figures from the Texas book 2009. Uh, although it's 11 years ago, but it's still could really illustrate the uh, manufacturing technology pretty very well. So of course, first you need to have the. Let's, let me just turn uh, the pointer, laser point. Yes, uh, normally you need the the the, the SolidWorks, the CAD softwares to 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 build the models, and then you need to transfer models to the Slice softwares, and uh, it could be open source or or I mean that manufacture the license the softwares to license your uh, models. And then to tell the 3D printer to, to fabricate the examples. And this is like a general, simple, simplified cases of these uh, additive manufacturing technologies. And here, uh, even 11 years ago, we already have a lot of choice for the polymer, uh, for, for, for the polymer 3D printing. Here you can see the rubbery materials, uh, very soft, and also the stiff materials, normally it's called like very white and also some high uh, temperature resistant uh, uh, materials. So this is um, our favorite technologies. And here, the manufacturing technologies, uh, I mean, that's, it's, it's a boom. I mean, that's in, in, in recent 20 years. As you can see on the first rows, this is the 3D printer manufacturer. I mean, that's up to 2019 in market. You can see here the polymer machines and also the metal machines occupy the majority of the additive manufacturing. You have a lot of choice from the high ending solutions to the low ending solutions. Today, during my topics on, on warnings, I will focus on the polymers and you will get the course in the, in the afternoon talking about the metal 3D printing components. And of course, in order to evaluate to, 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 to build the models, you need the software, so for example, the, the assets, you need the SOLIDWORKS, and also you need the simulation software to simulate your additive manufacturing process, uh, to evaluate the mechanical properties. So you have a lot of choice. And even here, look at the third row, it's a material supplies available in the market, and the majority of the choice uh, for your 3D printer, one is for the polymer, and another is for the metals. So you see, uh, we are already in the age of the active manufacturing. For me, I'm pretty interested in the technologies for the polymer uh, components. Here I list the four major uh, polymer 3D printing technologies for you to, to share with you. The first one I think uh, most of you are very familiar with is uh, material exclusions. I think uh, maybe during the during the virtual conference, you already noticed a lot of researchers did the research uh, studies on the fuse deposition modeling. That's the most uh, I mean, the common 3D printing technologies in the world now. And the process normally to use the filaments 
asking you to melt our filament and it's two different materials to deposit on the layers, uh, on the building fields layer by layer. And in the same technology, the material extrusions, we also have the choice for the direct ink writings. And uh, if you want to ask me what's the major difference between these two technologies is the DIW FDM. For FDM, you need the heat to, 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 to melt the filament. For the direct ink, normally you do not heat in your materials. It's a semi-liquid paste to extrude the outside. So that's like the material exclusions most used uh, in today's Another very popular technology is the VAT uh, photopolymerizations. And here you have the choice for the stereo lithography and uh, digital light processing. In these technologies, you are uh, curing your mm, materials, the photopolymer materials by the UV lights. So that's also a very popular technology seen nowadays. Then for the material yielding, that's a little bit more high-ending solution for the for the for the at manufacturers for the polymers, there will be two different types. One is the multi year modeling, another is the poly year modeling. And here, the major difference from these two technologies of the, of this to the better possible uh, photo polymerizations is here the materials will be excluded outside as the droplets. So the UV light will uh, kill the materials very fast. This creates uh, the possibilities, for example, the polygon um, models. The resolution is pretty high, and you can most use multi materials to create uh, graded functional materials in your, in your, in your from polymer components. And also, you have the choice for the powder bag fusions, and you will have like the selective laser synchronies to, to, to add the one type of the powder bag fusions. So today, for my interest being, I would like to first talk about the fuse deposition modeling because um, this, this solution is pretty cheap and uh, you can you can get it at your homes, you can get it at your labs, and I think uh, it's, 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 and also nowadays in the in the virtual conference, uh, we have a lot of researchers uh, discuss a bit, uh, discuss about it. So I think this uh, this one I would uh, like to introduce to you. And another thing is about the polyet modeling that's a little bit high end solutions. I would like to introduce how you did, how to use these high end solutions to create some advanced materials for our future applications. So this is my interesting. In order to 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 give you the flavor before the, our courses to what is the FDM printed examples and what is the polyet printed examples to give you a general picture, here is my examples. So on the first rows. This is my uh, examples printed by the FDM 3D printer. As you can see here, uh, the examples were fabricated by the very brittle PIA materials. In the first pictures, uh, I here use the plus and minus 45 degrees to fabricate uh, my uh, dog bone examples. And here I set the infill pattern, uh, infill density as uh, uh, 75 percentage to have holes. So uh, when I take the loadings on these samples, it will show the tactile damage uh, behaviors. And for here, uh, these samples, the dog bone samples, are fabricated by the infill density as 100 percentage, and the infill patterns, so what I said here, the rust angle is alpha equal to the 90 degrees. That means all the filaments is perpendicular to the to the loading direction. And I will talk it later uh, how is the mechanical behaviors of it is. And here is a uh, final failure pattern of plus and minus 40, uh, 45 degrees when the infill density is set as 100 percentage. You can see the crack pattern is quite complicated. You will find that these major cracks uh, are going through these uh, filament directions. And also uh, on the local local regions, you will see the fibers, it will be debounded, it will be rotated, and you will see the ruptures of these, uh, these filaments. So I will talk about this later, how to evaluate this mechanical behaviors. Because uh, nowadays for the FDM 3D printing, it's not just like for the prototyping. It was invented 30 years ago. So nowadays we are more interested in how to shift our prototyping functions of FDM 3D printing to the load bearing functions. So in order to do that, it is necessary to evaluate the mechanical behaviors, to understand the materials and also the middle structures of, 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 of FDM 3D printing pretty very well. 
And then for the for the for the second row, this is my prototype of of the samples uh, fabricated by the polyether technologies. So it's a very high end high end uh, high end resolutions uh, solutions for the polymer uh, components. The thickness, which you can see here, the black interface is around 0 0.4 millimeters, and the materials is quite stable during the printing. And this is architectural materials from the most uh, uh, black interface as you see here, like the conventional uh, composite materials. And going to the uh, architectural materials, and that the interface becomes really, you will find that this strategy will solve a uh, uh, a very important department in the material science is that uh, I can increase the strength and the toughness of these materials simultaneously. As you may know, that uh, these two materials, properties, uh, strength and toughness, they are mutually exclusive. That means if you increase the strength, you will normally get a very low toughness. And if you want to have the high toughness, you must decrease the strength. However, due to these design strategies, you can increase both the material properties uh, simultaneously. And this is the final failure pattern of these suture tessellation uh, mass materials. As you can see, during the failure, during the deformations, the failure mechanism is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, complicated. First of all, the, the interface will be failure. And then the, the tooth, what I uh, point to here, uh, in this future calculation, because tooth, the tooth will bend and will be contact with each other. And then you'll be, if you observe them with the SDM image on the, on, on, on the final failures, you will find all the failures uh, was happening happening in the, in, the, in the interface, the black materials. They will not have the problems uh, due to the debonding of the soft materials and the stiff materials. So that's why I choose the poly yet technologies to overcome these uh, difficulties. Since if the problem is having debonding, it's difficult to investigate the geometric effects. So that's like the two different uh, uh, printing technologies I would like to uh, talk to you today. This is give you a flavor. And here is my manual for our course today. So I will talk about the major two topics here. First of all, is the introduction to, to give you a brief idea of what is the additive manufacturing of polymer components, especially for the FDM 3D printing and also the polyester technologies. And uh, I will introduce about the working principles and uh, I will also introduce the, 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 the challenges to how to understand the mechanical properties of for these 3D printed polymer uh, parts. I will combine these two general topics into two major case studies. The first case studies, I will talk about the mechanics of the polymer FDM 3D printed components of the parts. And then the second one, I will talk about how to use the, the polyester technologies to develop the advanced materials, the bowing style of texture, the materials with unusual uh, mechanical properties. For example, the strength and toughness both increase and also negative photon ratios will was found in these architecture materials. So this is like my menu for, for today's course and I hope you will like it. Yes, so let's go into our first uh, topic. So the FDM 3D printing technologies. So here the FDM 3D printing technologies is a short abbreviation uh, of fused deposition modeling. So according to the ASTM standards, uh, the accurate uh, definitions of FDM technologies is a material extrusion process used to make uh, thermoplastic parts through heated extrusion and the deposition of materials layer by layer. Here, you will have like the two important keywords. The first one is the thermoplastic part. We remember that uh, in the digital uh, direct ink, direct ink writing technologies, which I talked about before as they belong to the same uh, technology, material extrusions, uh, for that one, you have like the semi-liquid uh, paste. So for here, the thermoplastic part uh, is a different one. That's like one unique uh, feature of FDM 3D printing. Another one is you need the uh, heating. You know, during the extrusion, you need to heat to melt your thermoplastic filament to extrude them and then deposit uh, on the building shells uh, layer by layer. That's like the two important keywords, which is different from the TIW, the direct ink writing technologies which belongs 
also to the material solution technologies. So on the right side, this is the working, simplified working principles of FDM's reading printing process. And here, the orange part is the filament. Your filament will fit in through these speed pinch rollers and going through these heated liquid fibers. Your filament will be melted and extruded and through these nozzle, nozzle print, uh, print nozzles. And you will deposit your materials layer by layer on these building shells. And here, uh, I don't know, maybe some of you are familiar with that in printing, you will notice that if the pinch, speed pinch rollers give too, too, too quick or too much force, it will create some micro buttons. The buttons phenomenon will happen during this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, manufacturing process and will create some problems. Uh, uh, of, of, of your examples, and you will not have the material to cool the outside anymore. And another thing is like uh, in the most, most, most uh, slight softwares of, of FDM 3D printer, the XY plane in, 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 in that software normally uh, tells that uh, this plane is the in-plane of the building shells, and Z axis, Z directions, normally is the out of the uh, out of plane uh, directions of these building shells. Here, this is my 3D printer in my lab. It's a multi multi nozzles, uh, multi materials solutions for the FDM 3D printer. You can combine the soft and hard materials by setting correct numbers uh, of the temperatures to, to fabricate uh, dual materials. And uh, it has a uh, uh, closed uh, uh, chambers, so it could be easily changed about to the to adjust the temperature uh, during the fabric uh, fabrications. Of course, this is not as high end solutions as the uh, stratus solutions. Uh, I would call it like the middle class uh, solutions, but it's already enough for for my research to study the mechanical behaviors of of FDM 3D printed examples. Yes, so in order to in order to uh, evaluate the mechanical properties of uh, FDM 3D print examples, then the first question is we need the mechanical testing standards. So there, up to now, there is no, no standard test method for the FDM 3D print examples. So looking at the literature, um, the majority of the researchers will choose ASTM standard 638 as an alternative uh, uh, testing standard for the FDM 3D print examples because it's, uh, the, it will be tell you the tensile properties of the plastics. Here I choose like the figures in the FDM standard to show you the dog bone examples. So the first ones have one, two, three, and five usually for the stiff materials, the hard materials of the plastics, and for the type four normally is for the rubber materials. That uh, that uh, like uh, the ultimate string could be over a hundred or two hundred. That would be like to suggest you to choose like the type four. However, however, since uh, since this is not a uh, standard test specialized for the FDM 3D print examples, there will be have some problems. So the major problems will be uh, due to the stress concentrations. If you want to get you know the material properties of the filament. So, for example, in order to get the uh, mechanical properties of like the stiffness of, of your samples, uh, you will just fabricate your filament as a uh, zero direction. The last angle is zero. So, your filament will allow the direction of the filament will be at the same direction as your loading directions. However, if you fabricate the examples in these ways, you will find that the, 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 at the edge, Especially at the transition regions, you're, you will find the discretization of your radius because the, the filament has a finite uh, thickness. So when you fabricate the, your models, you will find these uh, steps at the edges. That's not good. That will help create the stress concentrations and it will make your examples final phase filled at these steps, at this end of the steps. Then if your results. Uh, property, uh, especially for the stress of toughness, may be not valid anymore. Since according to the ASTM standard there, if you look at it, it will require you, I mean, that uh, to make your final failure patterns normally at the center, at the center of the double examples. If you're close to the transition, especially the radius transition part, 
the, the, the result is not trustable. And then in order to overcome these problems, uh, several researchers think about uh, uh, these solutions. It means that you print your samples, choose the different infill patterns. Now I choose like the co-central infill patterns to make uh, the samples print uh, circle by circle and then going to the end of the stop. Uh, for this kind of device, you will find the two uh, different problems. The first problem is the gaps at the center of the samples. Since at the since uh, due to the same reasons, the filament has the finite uh, finite width. So after you print it, especially to this end, there were some gaps during the during the printings, and this is not good. This will also create the problems during the testing. Another thing is like if you print in these ways and you use the digital image correlations to track the string uh, deformations, you will find that at the edge, it's not the non-tensile loadings. So that's also a not, uh, not a good design. So in order to avoid uh, these two important problems during the, during the mechanical testings, yes, here is uh, some alternative solutions. This alternative solution is provided by the Chanuka in the Korea University. Uh, he used this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, standard test, uh, especially for the tensile uh, properties of polymer matrix composite materials as, uh, as an alternative solution to, to, to obtain, especially when the rust angle is equal to degrees, zero degrees, it could tell us the uh, correct the properties of the strength and also toughness. I believe for the stiffness, if you choose the, the STM standard in this way, it, uh, it, it, it will not have a, a very big problems. And here, yes, you can see that uh, this is the parametric uh, uh, param parameters he chosen for his designs. And uh, look at these papers uh, this way. Especially, you print your samples in the rectangular, and then you add tabs at the edges. It will make your samples always be at the center. For me, uh, I still come back to the ASTM standard 638 designs, but I do not use the standard design anymore. I first use the numerical simulations to get the stress concentration, especially the highest the maximum uh, principal stress uh, in the simulations by assigning an isotropic material properties and to make the uh, transitions through this radius, the stress at that part is very similar, almost the same as in the centers. And after I redesigned this, uh, this standard examples, uh, it could be made every time the crack patterns, the, the, the final crack failures is at the center, which is valid for the, for the, for the ASIN standard. So this is my solution. So I will show you my, my examples uh, uh, in the, in later. And uh, here, uh, to all the students, if you are not so familiar with the FTM 3D printing process, I would like to highlight uh, these things to, 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 to make it in your memories. Because for, all the, for almost all the FTM manufacturing techniques, the most uh, highest or the largest mechanical and isotropy is for the FTM. That means it has the highest mechanical and isotropy. It could be around uh, over, it even could be over 50 percentage. Let's look at the left figure as shown here. It's the tensile strength of segments with a variety angle, rust angle, and compared about uh, with the buff materials of the ABS. So what you can see here, when your rust angle, here is the rust angle definition. It's the angles between your direction of filament and the loading of the, uh, the direction of your loadings. And when it is equal to zero, means that your filament directions has the same direction of the loading directions, and it shows the highest uh, tensile stress. However, if I change change the direction of the filament to the 90 degrees, that means your filament directions is perpendicular to the loading directions. You have very uh, small small values of the tensile stress. The difference is huge. It's here it shows it's over over twice. So this, uh, this study uh, demonstrates that, uh, uh, not only these studies, but uh, a lot of studies already demonstrated and proved due to the manufacturing technology itself, it caused uh, mechanical anisotropy for the FDM 3D printing. So for us, I mean, that's if we want to evaluate the elastic behaviors, 
Normally, we will choose the classical mechanics of the composite materials to evaluate the elastic behaviors to get the different metrics of, of the examples. Here, what I'd like to show you is a very, very classical uh, schematics in, the, in any books of the uh, composite uh, materials. It's the alignment uh, uh, structures. And by uh, choose by solving these, these metrics, you can obtain the the, the steepness of your FDM 3D printed examples. That's like uh, solutions, how to evaluate the steepness of, of, of your FDM 3D printing examples. However, since the function of FDM 3D printing is not a prototype anymore, it's already shifted to the loader bearing functions. So the steepness is not enough for this, uh, this initial application. The strength and toughness is very important to understand the the, 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 the mechanical behaviors. So what I was doing is I studied about the strength and toughness of FDM print examples to, to, to did several tests to understand to get flavor of PTAs. So the first of all, I choose to using the tensile test to, 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 to understand the mechanical behaviors of the unidirectional uh, specimens. And then also perform the test on the specimens with the layer orientation alternative by 90 degrees. And finally, when by uh, inspired or motivated by the second test, I, I started about the specimens with the alternative layer up, meaning that our the alternative degrees is not 90 degrees anymore. It could be at 10, 10, it could be the 40, and uh, more interesting results were showing in the strength and toughness studies. So yes, this is our case studies, and for the first uh, uh, test result for 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 this case studies is for the unidirectional specimens. Here, this is my custom designs. Uh, as I already told you, I already changed the radius uh, of of the designs, and you will find dimensions in my papers if you're interesting. Here, I choose the same definitions for the rust angles, the filament, uh, the direction of the filament. Uh, and the angles between the, the left direction of the filament and the loading directions, it will be set as alpha. And I use uh, my printer with the 3D Pro 2, and I use very brittle materials, the PRA. And here is the layer thickness is 0 0.2 millimeter, and I set the extrusion width is 0 0.4 millimeter. The input density here for the first study that should 100 percentage. I think all these parameters is available for or um, that uh, 3D, FDM 3D printer in market. The thing is like, I would like to set it as general and then to, for anyone, if you are want to repeat it in this test, you can repeat that the lab performs very easily. And here I do not set any control fibers. It's, it's not. That means uh, there is no out shear uh, outside of my infill patterns. Uh, if I set it yes, uh, when I test it, it will create some 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 unexpected uh, loading mechanisms for for the after yielding uh, after yielding performance, especially looking at the stretching curves. So here I do not set any control fibers in my examples, and then I set my extrusion temperature to 200 degrees. The bedding temperature is 60 degrees, and I use the tensile test the machine instrument model. 8874, and I set the displacement rate at 0.3 millimeter uh, per minute to ensure that the test is running under the polystatic status. So here is the stretching curves of my examples. Each test I was repeated three times uh, to ensure that the, that the consistent result, the alpha angles, uh, I choose the uh, five different cases, 0 to 90, 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Uh, there is not uh, uh, accepted, and, and the, the results of first it shows that all the all the samples feel as a brittle failure, as a brittle failure. Almost uh, it will be uh, failed after the peak stress. So this is the first study, and also here is the undeformed samples. Uh, you can see here are by equal to zero forty five ninety degrees. The quality of the print samples is great. Is quite uh, is quite a help. So I get the effective material properties, effective material properties for the stiffness, strength, and toughness. Uh, this is studied to give me the confidence that my designs for for, for the test and uh, my experiment uh, setups was quite uh, quite right. 
since the stimulus, the trend of the stimulus uh, follows the classical mechanics of the composite materials, uh, as I showed you before, that they use the laminar materials to get the effective stimulus. When the R increase means that when the filament uh, uh, direction is more uh, perpendicular to the to the to the loading directions, the effective stimulus will be decreased. And uh, it's not a surprise that the strength also will be decreased. And here the strength uh, decreases as the increase of the alpha, but it's not uh, not as the linear as like the stimulus strength. That's like the starting point when I want to be interesting about study the strength. And here is the final failure patterns. As you can see, there is not surprising since the brittle failures, all the crack patterns uh, will follow the will follow the filament uh, directions except for the zero cases. It's almost uh, a rupture of the filament. So that's like the first case studies and uh, first uh, first uh, tensile test uh, results. And here uh, I choose uh, different middle structure of my specimens. Here I choose the layer orientation alternative by uh, 90 degrees. So here the, the angle becomes a 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees, 6 degrees, minus 30 degrees, and 0, 90 degrees. If you look at the stretch and curves, why interesting phenomena has appeared in here? Please notice about the plus minus 45. The stretch and curves tell us that the failure is not brittle anymore. It becomes a dark top, right? Since oh, if you look at uh, as before, at here, Hopefully it is like the brittle, but we are going to change about the middle structure of my examples, the, 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 the brittle failure transition to the ductile failures. And if you look at the toughness, the effect of toughness, uh, the, all the, the, the magnitude, the magnitude of toughness almost three times and two times uh, higher than the, than the other two cases. Yeah, please note, in the stiffness and all the stress results, uh, the magnitude almost the same for these three different cases. So I'm interested in because uh, why? What's the reason to cause these ductile behaviors? Since my material's PLA is 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 brittle, the ductility should not come from the should not come from the material itself. So I just uh, make my assumptions on the middle structure. It is because the middle structure to create this toughness. But uh, how it uh, creates the uh, the, 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 the ductilities. It's not a single sentence uh, middle structure to, could answer it. So in order to evaluate what's happening here, I use digital image correlations to evaluate the, the string field of, of that area. And also for the for these other two, the most interesting to what I find is that if you look at the local list to evaluate the angle uh, angle of the filament, Actually, the filament uh, rotated during this uh, uh, during these uh, local regions, and by evaluate the by, uh, by evaluate uh, the average fiber orientations here, what you can see that uh, the fibers uh, the average fibers rotation in the plus and minus forty five degrees it rotates much more, almost twice as the thirty and minus uh, six degrees and uh, uh, for the zero 90 degrees, the average fiber rotation is almost uh, zero, almost zero. So I would uh, like to guess uh, through my experience of observations of the guess due to the filament uh, rotations, especially after the debunking of the filament, uh, of the filament layer by layer, that is the reason to create the disabilities. Yes, yeah. and in order to, oops. yes. Then here I would like to, in order to move to the next uh, next surface, I would like to show you the snapshot of my plus and minus 45 degrees. This is the stress stress and curves of that assessment. And uh, yes, before I think before the purple purple status, purple color status, you will not find the clear crack patterns on the assessment, especially at surface. However, if you go to uh, after a couple of for example, uh, this uh, purple, purple, purple status, you will find that the filament actually, the FDM 3D print examples will form some shear bond and close to the shear bond, especially on the surface, on the surface of, of, of the filament, the, 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 direct, the directions of the filament actually rotate a little bit, rotate a bit. 
it is special release part. And then in the final phases, the crackle valve first uh, goes through is uh, is the shear bound, and then locally, if you look in the inside of filament, it's already hit too much, uh, a lot during the deformations. So we we test. Uh, I was thinking that uh, although here you uh, should not see on the surface, but actually for the internal, due to the demanding of the filaments here, the, I mean, the, especially here, it may already come from the rotation of the uh, filament close to the crack crack region, the shear bound region. And then inspired by the previous studies, uh, here I would like to show you my studies on the alternative layout. So what's the meaning? So here the, the, the alternative layers, the angles between the alternative la uh, layers is not 90 degrees anymore. The, here I use the beta, two beta to define the, the, the angles between the alternative layer. The beta could just start from zero to the 90s, where beta equal to zero means that all the filaments going through the same direction as the loading directions. That's uh, uh, degrading back to the half equal to zero cases. And when beta equals to the 90, that means all your filaments is perpendicular to the to the loading directions, which is degrading the cases to the half equal to 90. This is like uh, two benchmarks for this, uh, these studies. And then when you change about the different betas, uh, especially for beta equal to the 45 degrees, this is the plus and minus 45 degrees, as I showed you before. Looking at the stress strain curve, here I also performed the repeated test for my, for my examples, but in order to, to, to make it clear for the brevities, I did not show you the error bars here, but uh, all the error bars were indicated in the effective uh, material properties. What you can see here, is clearly for beta equal to the zero degrees and beta equal to the 90 degrees, yes, all the failure uh, follows to the first brittle failure. However, if we change, we just give some small angles of, of the alternative layers, the brittle, the brittle, the brittle failure will transfer gradually to the ductile duct failures, especially when the beta equals to the 45 degrees and the 40 degrees, you see, it's, it's have very, uh, long uh, alternate strains and provide uh, very high toughness. And here, look at the stiffness. Yes, everything, uh, every case is uh, uh, decreased uh, gradually when beta increase. Let's follow the classical mechanics of the uh, composite uh, uh, materials. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's not too much, uh, I mean, that's uh, surprising. But here, if you look at the strength and the toughness, especially for the toughness, that's very interesting because in this class, that uh, we can play with the strength and toughness easily by changing about the middle structure arrangement. Here, I just use a very uh, simple or conventional arrangement, just the changing about the rust angles between the alternative layer. Of course, you can design more complicated ones, but uh, our next steps to, to, to study it in our groups. But look at here, you can increase a little bit. Uh, for example, when beta equals to 10 degrees to get the optimized highest stress. And then for the beta, uh, when beta equals to zero and beta to the equal to the 90, you will always get a very low toughness. However, when the beta equals to the 40, uh, 30 or 45, and even 50, you will get a very high toughness. And the magnitude in these uh, four cases is almost uh, the same. Uh, five times, six times higher than top of this at the beta equals 90. So this is gives us the uh, possibilities to design some uh, materials with the high toughness, uh, high stress, and how you balance the ones. So this is like uh, the first study on the FDM printed uh, uh, components. And then I, uh, I introduced about the the, the FDM 3D printed components. And here I would like to go into my second uh, topics on the polyet technologies. So this is a liquid polymer systems. And in these polyet uh, technologies, the materials normally we use the acrylic based uh, photopolymers. And uh, in the process, each layer is killed by the UV light immediately as it's printed because the nozzles will come out the, the droplets 
come out to the topic. So the, the curing process is quite, uh, uh, quite fast. And due to these reasons, uh, the, the most, uh, I mean, that's the important features of these technologies is could print multi materials. And even um, more data things is you can combine the two contrasting materials, two contrasting materials, for example, very stiff and soft materials together to mix it uh, in the specific ratios of the material libraries of the stressors, uh, 3D printer, and you can create uh, the gradient function of materials by only two materials together. And also another thing is here, normally you will not find the debunking problems by print soft and material together because using these uh, technologies. And the resolution is pretty high. It will be around 0 0.006 inch for the resolutions. But he remember, although it says that the process, uh, that the UV light can cure in each layer uh, immediately after, after it's uh, printed, but normally during the literature or during my findings, at least you need to put your samples uh, 24 hours after after your printing, then you can do the test. You can get the more stable stable material properties. You cannot do it after printing. The material actually is not uh, is not very stable. Within 24 hours. Here is the working principles of the polyester technologies, and you can see here you will have like the yeting head. And for for example, in the of yet two six zero, there will be have like a 20, 30, 32 nozzles. 32 nozzles, and on each nozzle you will have very small, uh, much smaller sub nozzles, and uh, to make the droplets come outside. And you use use the UV light to fill in the droplets coming outside to put in on the building shelves layer by layers. And you have a lot of choice for your for your 3D printer. And uh, for example, the very uh, stiff materials, the rubber materials, high temperature resistant materials, uh, ship memory materials. You have a lot of choice for these uh, uh, printing technologies. So due to these uh, high ending solutions, normally the researchers would use these high uh, ending um, 3D printed uh, polymer printing, uh, polymer uh, manufacturing technologies to fabricate some advanced materials to make some prototypes to, to get some uh, concepts if it is possible to, to obtain some advanced materials. Here I would like to use uh, my uh, my one well, my case uh, studies for the bio-inspired architecture the materials. I mean, in this topic, uh, the many activity was separated into the six parts. First of all, I will just show you the morphology of the seed code of seed code of Botulata seed. And then for the second part, I will introduce how to use the 3D printing uh, technologies of the polyet to fabricate the 3D print examples, how I evaluate the mechanical properties and how I perform the direct tests because all the material properties from the strategies, they have the intellectual properties. Actually, you do not know what the chemical compositions uh, of it is. So we needed to do our mechanical um, test to understand it pretty very well. And then I will show the mechanical behaviors of my bowing sound architecture the materials and I also will show you how I develop my analytical models to predict this uh, complicated structure, how to get the effective mechanical properties. And uh, during my studies, I also find a very interesting phenomenon, the uh, negative positive ratios of these architectural materials. As you may know, that uh, normally our materials in our world is the positive or positive ratio, but when the values uh, especially for the isotropic materials, the limit of the potency ratio could be from the minus one to the 0 0.5. And when going to the negative, the materials has already proved to have much more higher energy absorption mechanisms. So recently, I mean, the scientists and the research are very interested in to develop some normal materials with the negative potency ratio. And in nature, normally it's hard to find the natural material with the negative potency ratios. However, the potalaxis actually shows some, some, some phenomena of the, of the possible negative potency ratio. And I will also to, to tell you that uh, through these studies, then we can understand better of why nature should the designs, uh, should the social tessellation designs for this potalaxis. 
And this is if this study if you are interested, you could go into the advanced materials and this is like my cover paper at that time. So here it is, the suture tessellation. Uh, I think uh, maybe the majority of you are not familiar with these two words. What's the suture tessellation? Uh, actually, this suture tessellation is widespread in nature. And here, what I show you first is the turtle shells. And we all know that there are 13 beauty blocks of the turtles uh, on the turtle shells to, 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 to compose these, uh, these shells. And if you look at details, especially the interface between the between the two different uh, building shells, you will find these zigzag patterns. And uh, according to the Robert Hook, to have to uh, go from his books, we call it like uh, these patterns, these geometry patterns with the uh, uh, hard and soft materials combined together, we call it like a suture. The softer interface tissues will articulate these two or uh, the building blocks together. This uh, composed the suture. And when the suture uh, in that uh, tessellation, we call it like the suture tessellations. So this is like the suture tessellations found in nature. For example, in the turtle shells, and uh, scientists and researchers also find find the similar patterns, similar patterns in the skin of box fish. It's the skins of the of the of the box fish. And if we look uh, in the Micrometer scales, you will find these uh, these these zigzag patterns, the suture tessellations on the skin. And also, when we take a look at the woodpecker beaks, you know that the woodpecker uses uh, beaks to 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 get uh, his food off of food. And if we take a look at the details uh, on on the beaks, you will also find these zigzag patterns, the suture tessellations around here. So here the scale is the nanometer, here is the centimeter, here is the micrometer, and also in the millimeters, especially you find in the seed code, not only the animals, but also in the plants, you will find also these similar patterns. So what I can say is that suture tessellation is a very common feature in nature, but previous, I think several ones noticed on it, and uh, uh, before my studies, there yeah, is no analytical solution to predict the stiffness of these suture tessellations. And here today, I would like to use my favorite uh, plants, uh, the Potalaka seed, as a good example to, to let you get the flavor of it. Is. So, the first question you may ask me is why you choose uh, the Potalaka seed? Uh, that's a good question. Mm, actually, the reason I choose it is because. The Potalaka seed is everywhere in the earth. There are hundreds of subspecies uh, you can find in the hot regions, the cold regions, in everywhere in the earth. And uh, the reason is like why the Potalaka is so widespread in the earth. There should be some good protection mechanisms to protect this seed could, could go everywhere. And uh, one of my assumptions is the seed code is a major reason to protect the seed inside to avoid the external environmental damage or the mechanical loading uh, damage, for example, from the predictor or the, when the conditions, the environment conditions become very dry or become very wet to protect the seed inside. And here, the figure A, what I show you is the flower of this potalaka, potalaka species. And this is the seed of the potalaka seed and it is very small. The dimensions of the, the, the subspecies, what I choose, is even smaller than one millimeter. And we use the SEM images to look at the surface, the morphologies of the seed coat. It's very fascinating. And you will find these uh, very beautiful structural tessellations on the surface, on the, on the surface of the seed coat. And if you take a look at it here, yes. Uh, the irregular hexagonal uh, building blocks was articulated by this uh, wavy thin interface together to form this uh, this seed code. One thing I would like to highlight in here: this uh, this seed code is different from the uh, the structural tessellation pattern is different from the turtle shells as you see here. Because in the turtle shell, in the skin of box fish, box, box of fish, box fish, 
you will find that the Sutra region occupies very smaller, smaller regions of the building blocks. However, if you look at the Potalaka scene, the Sutra, the Sutra region occupies the majority of these building blocks of these academic cells. So I would guess that the Sutra uh, translations play a more important role in, in, in this deep code, and it's very interesting for me to understand what's the mechanisms, what's the mechanics of these sutra translations. So first of all, because the reality is very complicated, I need some simplified models. This is my bio, uh, simplified bio um, physics models to represent these uh, morphologies. Here I use the rectangular uh, shapes to represent the, the, the building blocks. And, uh, the cytosol cause caves on the side lengths of these hexagonal shapes to represent the, the, the suture tessellation, the suture patterns in here. And what you can see here, the light green colors was represented by the hard face, and, and the, the uh, dark green regions represent the thin interface, the soft tissues. So here, the dark green is the soft materials, the light green is the uh, hard materials. And uh, I assume, I assume the thickness of this interface is uniform everywhere. So in this model, T uh, is fixed as the same. And here you will find the L and L zeros. So this is like a compound, uh, the, the traditional definitions of the biological scientists. Because before me, uh, when the biological scientists want to study about the, the suture translations or these suture patterns, they use the suture indigitation index to evaluate. What it is, is, uh, is first uh, they define the L to represent the start point and the end point, the length between the start point and end point of uh, suture. And then they use the L0 to represent the complete length of these suture lines. So the ratio between the L0 over L, they define as a suture indication index. When this index go to one, that means you have a flat interface. If the numbers become higher, two or three, when the numbers go higher, you will you will get more complicated sutures. So yes, uh, this is the definition for the suture in the, in the digitation index to represent the, the morphologies of, of the of the suture. But however, due to my studies, especially from the mechanics point of view, it's not enough. Since, uh, for example, you have a trapezoidal shape or anti trapezoidal shapes. The suture index may be the same, but uh, the, the, the mechanics, especially the loading transmission mechanisms, may be totally different. So I also use a theta to represent the weakness. And then, this makes uh, the analytical models and uh, also make uh, these studies uh, feasible to understand the, the functions of these forms. So he, here is the theta definitions, that's the angles of these cytosolidal curves. So due to these reasons here, I use the theta C to represent the willingness uh, close to the cross junctions. In my uh, simplified models, I always set theta C equals to the 45 degree, uh, uh, 90, uh, 90 degrees to avoid uh, two theta is 90, theta C is 90 degrees to avoid the, the overlapping of, of the interface. And uh, theta M, it could be from the zero to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, to, to 45 degrees or even co can go higher to present the higher wavelengths uh, of, of, of the, the amplitude of the wavelengths of the interface. So this is my simplified power physics models. And in order to perform the test and to study it, I use the uh, 3D printing technologies because for the traditional manufacturing, the subtractive, uh, manufacturing, subtractive uh, manufacturing technologies, it's not uh, possible to fabricate these complicated geometries. So I did manufacturing to make my dreams feasible. So here I choose the, like, the multi-material 3D printer of yet uh, two six uh, zeros, which have the higher resolutions, and it could also print like multi-materials. In order to represent the hard face and the soft interface, so I pick 
uh, two materials from the material libraries of the uh, stretches. One is the very white uh, plus. One is the very white uh, plus. It's a very rigid materials. Here I use the ASCM standard. Since it's very rigid, it could be used by ASCM standard directly for the plastics. And uh, fit A shoots my designs. I make the shorter thing, uh, shorter version. Cut my designs. And here is the figure B shoots my suggestion curves of the experiment result. Each double test was repeated um, three times to get the, 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 the consistent mechanical behaviors. And here I use the numerical modeling to co-fit these uh, experiment curves in order to obtain the material properties which was used later in the composite material simulations in the abacus. Here I use the power law plasticity models with the damage evolution law to capture these linear, nonlinear, uh, yielding, after yielding, and uh, uh, after yielding, softening, and I listed the hardening uh, uh, behaviors. And uh, this is my numerical models and the material properties used later in abacus. And then for the tempo black plus, it's a very rubbery material, but here I do not uh, choose any standard test uh, mm, uh, and that's uh, the designs because it has some reasons. Since all the materials, the soft materials in my models, if you look at it here, it's all the C interface, it's all the same interface. So if, uh, oops, if I choose like the bulk materials, I choose the bulk materials testing standard from the ASTM standard, it could not provide me the accurate properties for the for the interface because uh, uh, from my study and uh, several researchers already identified when the interface is very thin here is 0 0.4 millimeters there would be some mixing for the mixing regions it's not a thin interface anymore it will then be an interface that means uh, the very white and the tangle black will have some mixed materials close to edge which cause uh, the material behavior is even more complicated. So I customized and designed these C interface materials to get the accurate material properties of my example, 0.4 millimeters. Here I introduced the, the, this butterfly uh, edge designs to, to avoid the stress concentrations for the single layer uh, testings. Then I can get the true material properties of, of, of my Tangle Black Plus interface. Of course, uh, to design it, I use the numerical simulations to, to observe the stress concentrations at the whole dog bone test examples to decide how to get these, uh, these parameters. And then by having the successful designs of my examples, I use it uh, to perform the experimental test. Here is the load displacement curves of uh, my testings, and each test was repeated three times. Here I also use the numerical models uh, to co-fit in my experiment curves to get this load displacement curves. And then in the numerical simulations, I use a bilinear plastic plastic hardening model with the linear damage evolution law to capture the uh, load displacement behavior as you see here. And this material real properties also later on input into the composite, uh, into the simulations of the composite materials in the abacus. So this is how I uh, understand the mechanical properties from the Stratford's uh, material library and how I overcome the difficulties when the mixing, uh, unexpected mixing phenomenon happens and how to avoid the, the stress concentrations at the edge. So that's it. Then I fully understand uh, the materials what I would use in the composite design. And here is my 3D printed examples on and uh, represented volume elements. For the first rows, this is my 3D uh, printed examples. So what you can see here, the white regions was fabricated by the very white and the black regions was fabricated by the tangle black plus. And uh, here I printed all my examples as a function of theta n. That's the definitions here, the theta m to define the wavelengths of my interface. 
And uh, when the theta equals to the 90 degrees, that means my interface is flat, is flat interface. That's uh, degraded to the classical traditional composite materials. Then when the theta becomes smaller, going to the 10 degrees, that's the most highest will be these cases I choosing for mimicking the 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 potlaka seed, the seed code morphologies. So uh, 20 and 40 is gradually increased the weaviness. And here L1 and L2 is the dimensions which are restricted by the fixture of my tensile test machines, which I use the sleek machines, universal material testing machines to test it. And to 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 make sure that at least you I will have like a fast sales to avoid the boundary effect. And uh, figure B shows my representing volumes uh, element for the numerical simulations. Although here the uh, dash lines shows the smallest uh, representing volume element. However, I choose the four times of it to combine to form my unit cells um, to run the simulation because I would like to also interest in on the crack propagation through the cell to cell. And I perform my tests on direction one and direction two because these hexagonal shapes have two symmetric axes. One is close to the uh, the corners, one is at the edges. So it's, uh, I have like the direction one loading and the direction two loadings, which this is the coordinate distance which I use. And here I would like to show you my, my experimental histories for, for you have a views of what it is. So let me just uh, run it. So this is the, the, the test running on the direction one when theta equals to the 90 degrees that all my interface is flat, flat and you will see the, the stressing behavior shows that uh, the failure is brittle and they experience the catastrophe failures and the strength is pretty low and also the toughness is pretty low and the cracker will uh, propagate through this, uh, this, uh, this uh, black uh, uh, interface. And then here is my case is when I in increase the weaviness, means that the theta uh, becomes smaller, that's the highest weaviness. And what you can see, the strength and toughness both increase simultaneously. And also the, the, the failures becomes to the dark part instead of the bridge ones. So that's very interesting. And uh, this, uh, this tells, of course, here you, you can hardly compare about the stiffness, but I will show you the effective stiffness later. And uh, this phenomena also uh, appears at the uh, different loading conditions. When the loading, com uh, when the loading direction is two, you will find a similar, similar trend. Uh, for the first case, when the interface becomes flat, everywhere is uh, you know, it shows it's very low stress, low toughness, and experience the catastrophe, brittle failure. But for the second case, for the second case, the strength and toughness both increase uh, simultaneously, and also it behave very dark Uh Be remember that all my tests uh, was running at the quasi static conditions. So what you can see here, the tests actually experience around, the, for example, when theta equals 10, this test experience like two hours. So it's, uh, um, there is no any damping factors uh, happening here. So this is my uh, experiment history. What I like to show you, then just, uh, let me just choose to the laser point. Yes, this is the summarized the mechanical behaviors of uh, all my cases uh, running under the direction one and the direction two, you next to and the loadings. So here, the figure A shows the stress string curves, which every case is, uh, was repeated three times to get a consistent result. What you can see here is easily the strength and toughness uh, increase when the weakness, when the weakness uh, become higher. That means the red curves represent the, the most weak ones designed for, and the blue ones is designed three, and the green ones is designed to, and the black ones is designed.
one. And the, the failure patterns, failure, failure mechanisms here is more close to the brittle failure, here is uh, more close to the ductal failures. And the dash lines, what you see here, is my simulation results. So the numerical simulation results uh, could quite uh, capture the uh, extreme uh, uh, behaviors uh, very well by, 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 by inputting my dog bone test examples and also my customized interface pattern examples to get a very consistent result. And for the uh, figures, it shows my uh, cases loading in the direction tools. Yes, uh, it follows the same trend when the weakness becomes higher, means that I have a smaller seater, the strength and toughness increase, and the behavior it behaves more like the ductal failure instead of the flat in phase, it uh, behaves like the brittle failures. And during the, during the test, I also used the digital image correlations to capture the full field displacement of my examples. Here, figure C and figure D shows my DIC results when the examples running at the same global screen, applied screen. And the very interesting, if you look at the figure, uh, figure C, it shows my loading directions when direction is equal to uh, 1. And clearly it shows that uh, the string localizations for the highest, most high, most highest ones have very less string localizations. Compared about to, to here, the design ones almost has three times higher string localizations than the design four. And uh, this, uh, this trend also uh, find similar similar trend trend finding the uh, loading direction tools. You can see this weaving needs largely reduced the stress uh, string concentrations uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the at the component. And uh, figure E is my final failure of my examples, and uh, you will find that the final failure uh, crack patterns was. Uh, the same, almost the same as the string localization patterns. That makes these uh, experiments more consistent. And you can see here when the uh, geometry becomes more wavy and like the design form, uh, the, 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 actually the deformation patterns are more complicated. So that's like uh, the, the mechanical behaviors of these experiment uh, studies. And then, uh, since you already look at the strength and curves, now I'm interested to get the effective material properties to evaluate, to assess these advanced materials. So interestingly, let's look at the first, the steepness. You will see that uh, normally, if you look at the back, here it's mentioned that for the theta equals to the 90 degrees, the volume fraction of the hot phase is over uh, 95 percentage. And for the, for the most real ones, the hard, hard materials is only 80 percentage. So according to the classical mechanics of the composite materials, the steepness for the, for the 90 degrees, for theta equals to 90 degrees, should be higher than theta equals to the 20. But however, the experimental results or even the simulation results shows the opposite directions. Means that this geometry or this is the suture tessellation even could increase the stiffness. So, according to the hushing strickman lower bound, it provides the opposite direction. That's the classical mechanics predictions. So that means there should be something we are not understand uh, the, uh, for these loading mechanisms. So, uh, in order to understand it, I developed some uh, analytical models to predict the stiffness. I will show you later, which can capture these stiffness behaviors quite very well. But here, let's look at the strength and toughness first. That uh, here, what you can see, mm, not expected, uh, not, 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 not very surprisingly, that uh, from the stress chain curves, the stress is much higher than the, than the, the for of the theta equals to the 10 degrees is much higher than theta equals to the 90 degrees, almost twice higher than that. And for the toughness, it also provides uh, like uh, six times higher toughness in the theta equals to the 10 degrees than compared to the theta equals to the 90 degrees. 
So that's uh, that's very interesting and very surprising because uh, that means this strength, this uh, suture tessellations could include the strength toughness simultaneous and to overcome the, 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 the difficulties of the materials design. And another thing is what you can observe here. Look at these two values. Uh, although the geometry have the two different uh, symmetric axes, the mechanical behaviors in direction one and direction two, they are very isotropic. They are very isotropic. If you look at the stiffness, stress, and toughness, there are not too much big difference in the direction one and the direction two. That also um, tells us that uh, these geometries can behave like isotropic materials in the direction one and the direction two. Then the next question is, is why it has such kind of high strength and toughness, especially the weaveness become higher. What's the mechanisms? What's the reasons? So here, fit these can illustrate, can answer these questions quite well. So here I use the energy to, to answer these questions. Here, what you can see, the UH means the strain energy absorbed by the hard phase during the deformation. And the UO means that the uh, strain energy absorbed by the whole composite. So if you look at these uh, figures, this is for the direction one, since direction one and direction two, the mechanical behavior is almost uh, uh, isotropic. So I just use the one direction to illustrate this, the, 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 this, uh, these answers. And you can see the ratios between the hard phase uh, energy absorbed by hard phase over the total energy absorbed. It shows when you have the higher, higher, higher waves, C time becomes smaller, the ratios become larger. That demonstrates it is not due to the soft interface, the volume fractions of the of the of the soft in interface to improve the toughness. No. It's, it's totally because these suture tessellations, when the interface becomes more wavy, it involves the more, I uh, mean, that's the regions of the hard face to, to absorb energy. So that's, uh, that's the key mechanisms to, 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 to answer, which, 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 which uh, increase the, the stress and toughness by doing, by having these wavy, wavy, wavy structures, by having these uh, suture tessellation structures. It's all due to the hard phase to absorb the energies. And then here, I would like to show you my, my answers, how to answer the questions here, why the stiffness increase uh, when the weakness increase, which is opposite to the classical mechanics of the composite uh, series. Here is my schematics of the loading transmissions. And uh, this is the schematics. Uh, you will have like the two materials. One's phase one is the hard materials, and uh, phase zero is the uh, is the soft interface. And by applying uh, the virtual complementary uh, work to study the energies of it, especially uh, analyzed uh, in a more generalized mechanical model. So what you can see here, this uh, this uh, this have like the uh, hard phase and uh, soft interface. I define my geometries with uh, uh, four important uh, key factors: the geometrical, non-dimensional geometrical factors. Beta is the shape factors, which I will show you in the next slides. It will decide why I said it's the general, general mechanical, generalized mechanical models because these betas could give you by changing different values. It could be give you all the possibilities all the possible social tessellations in the nature. And uh, theta is the waviness factors uh, which uh, define the waviness of my uh, generalized mechanical models. And the lambda over t is the non-dimensional waveless. And n is the number of the, of the, of the, of the waves. And uh, these uh, key factors, uh, if we look at uh, later in here, that's like the power of, of the key vector, uh, key factors beta. When beta larger than zero and less than theta, it will give you like the hexagonal shapes, like the photolacases, like the box skin of the box fish. It's all hexagonal uh, shapes. And uh, when beta equal to the zero, the, the, the models will be graded to the rectangular shapes and it will give you the answers 
For example, this, this shape is, is in the common minute. It could predict the, the stiffness of the common minute quite very well. And I also developed like the strength uh, and the toughness models for the for the for for, for this uh, social tessellation, but I will not discuss uh, with you today. But here is uh, I would like to use the rectangular, and also here it shows like when beta equal to the theta is a diamond shape. This is uh, very similar to the patterns of the of the turtle shell and also the woodback peaks. So due to having this beta extracting these key important geometrical factors, this generalized the social tessellation analytic models could predict almost all the possible social tessellation patterns in nature. And uh, yes, here is like the definitions to, for the local. L means the local, uh, local suture parameters. And uh, yes, so I would like to use the, 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 the deposition of the suture tessellations to illustrate how I solve these problems. Since the first, here, I already have my analytical formulas for the generalized suture tessellations models. Now, when it becomes more complicated, I only need to use the decompositions, use the rule of mixtures to, to obtain the effective stiffness in the direction one and the direction two. Here, I use like the exact nodes to, to, to let you understand how it works. So I have the models for the green part and for the red part. And since it's the symmetrical, adding the, them together. So I can use either the rule of mixtures to, to, to get the effective, effective stiffness of that regions, of, of that directions. And for the direction two, so for the hexagonal shapes, that's a little bit more complicated because you need to decompose your geometry into the three parts. The first part, this is the red ones, is the hierarchical uh, sutures. So it has like the first order is the smaller triangular suture, and in the second order is the large, I mean, that's the triangular sutures. So use the hierarchical uh, analytical models, hierarchical suture and analytical models could predict the stiffness here very well. And uh, the second row is uh, the uh, isotropic materials of this uh, light green with, combined with the, the, the yellow suture regions. Uh, it's the same. By using the rule of mixtures, it could be give me satisfied results of the of the hexagon shapes. The same principles was used on the rectangular shapes and also diamond shapes, and it works uh, pretty very well. And uh, yes, so the 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 ideas, the concept of it is quite simple. Yes, uh, I sum up all the energies, the total, the, all the energies. Which, have, which appears calculating the slant interface, tip interface, and two regions to get the total energy. So what's these three energies uh, come from? So I call, here is like a tooth. So this part is the tip, tip regions. I calculate the energies of the tip regions. I calculate the energy of this slant interface. This is the slant regions. And I also calculate the energies of these tools, which is obtaining the energies. And by summing up uh, these uh, three energies, I could get my effective stiffness. Here I use the effective stiffness in the direction x, or in the previous definition is like direction ones. I can get my effective stiffness. That's the ways how I how I obtain my analytical models. And then. This is the theoretical predictions and the finite element simulation uh, results. And uh, you can see the theoretical predictions can give quite high uh, accurate predictions. The, the symbols represent the finite element simulations, the stiffness ratios between the hard face uh, one and zeros uh, put from the 500 to the 50,000, which normally is the range of the of the of the of the power power materials, and uh, the predictions is quite high. It's around the 7.9 percentage. The difference is only 7.9 percentage. And here is the loading direction one, and here is the loading direction two. The analytical models works pretty very well. Uh, for these uh, uh, complicated uh, geometries. And uh, yes, 
Then we have the local models. Then we understand what's the loading uh, transmission mechanisms of my models of of these future tessellation uh, morphologies. And then here we are also interesting to see, you know, from the stress uh, point of view. Previously, I used the DIC from the stream point of view. Here, I use the stress control in the simulations to understand the uh, the weakness. What's the weakness uh, functions of the weakness? Uh, it is. So from these stress contours, uh, from the two different loading directions, here is the loading direction one, here is the loading direction two, it could be get easily conclusions from here. When the waviness become, when theta air becomes smaller, means that waviness is higher, the stress localizations in the, in the sutures will be become smaller. And more stress uh, or more energies will absorb in the hard phase. That's from the numerical simulation point of view to prove, also the second times to prove uh, that uh, uh, the functions, what's the functions of this future type solution. Because uh, as we know, forms will decide the functions. Here is a clearly, uh, clearly illustration is uh, these relationships. Yes. And here, this is the, my parametric, uh, par parametric studies on the on study on the stress and toughness. As you know, in the experiment, uh, uh, the, the stiffness of the 3D printer, stiffness ratio between the of, uh, stiffness ratio of this 3D printer is only 500. But uh, for the for the for the for the understanding of the whole whole biological materials, it could be larger. So I change my stiffness ratios from five to the fifty thousand to understand in this wide stiffness range difference, what's the behaviors of my stress and toughness. And very interesting, if you look at these uh, this figures, two figures, you will find this trend will keep all the same during these wide stiffness ratios. That demonstrates these uh, structural tessellations that the, the principle, working principle of these structural tessellations is really can help us to build some advanced materials with some excellent mechanical properties. That's uh, that's uh, um, that's uh, that could be I mean, confirmed from these studies. Of course, when the stiffness ratio is very small, the difference then the, the geom geometric effect will not dominate these behaviors. Normally, the volume fraction at that regions, the volume fractions of the classical mechanics of the composite series will dominate the mechanics. So that's the things I would like to highlight. And then <clears throat> the interesting, the most interesting phenomenon I observed during this, uh, this, uh, these studies by using the uh, 3D printer here, what you can see here is the negative Poisson ratios. So this is my experimental curves. The E stiffness ratio is 500. And uh, during the experiments, and during the simulations, I find when theta equals to the 20, the possible ratios could be as low as zero. Then at that time, I ask my questions. Is, is it possible to obtain the negative possible ratio by changing the stiffness ratio? Uh, yes, because we understand the loading candidates. So by doing that, I increase my, my, my stiffness ratios as I did before from five to the 50,000. Very interesting, when the stiffness ratios becomes larger, the Poisson's ratios, especially for the theta equals to 10 and theta equals to the 20, the Poisson's ratio could become the negative. So that's very interesting. Also, as we all know, that the negative Poisson's ratio is very rare in nature. However, these forms, these suture tessellation forms, could provide us the negative Poisson ratios. But how to do it? These parametric space studies tell us the guidelines how to do it. And uh, if you have higher waviness, means that when your C times become smaller, close to the 30 to the tens, and then you increase your stiffness ratios, then you can easily to obtain the negative Poisson ratios. And uh, by doing so, you only need to play your geometric combinations and uh, ge geometrical factors and also the material combinations together to obtain it easily and shift the negative Poisson ratios to positive Poisson ratios uh, very convenient. And this will provide much 
battery energy observer, observer uh, energy absorption uh, functions from these materials. That's uh, one of the common features of negative positive ratios materials. And then I think uh, yes, I still running on time. So like uh, uh, we have on, uh, have uh, uh, several minutes uh, to, to 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 understand uh, to to do it. Yes, I would like to hear to introduce. I mean, that's uh, my my thinking about the nature of designs. So as a uh, uh, as, uh, as we already find, or as all the researchers and scientists already find, that these suture tessellation patterns is everywhere in the nature. From the nanometer scales to the centimeter scales, you can find everywhere in, during the micro scales, millimeter scales, you will also find these uh, suture uh, patterns. And then the question is, why nature creates uh, features uh, in, in these in this patterns? So what's, what's the for what's these uh, forms? I mean, that's what's the strategies of the nature to choose uh, the suture tessellations. So here is my answers, my preliminary answers to answer it. So if we look at these uh, these uh, five species into the flora species, or uh, it's like the plant plant, or the fauna species, the the animals, the woodpack, uh, the skin of boxes and uh, turtle shells and uh, combine them as a statistic uh, plot in here. Here, I use like AL to represent the regions of the suture regions. And uh, theta L is, uh, is the weakness of my suture and the range, uh, the, the areas of the, of, the, of the suture, I call it like S. And I use the AL over square of root of S to represent the regions occupied by the suture tessellations of the epidermis cells and use the A represents the, 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 the scales of, of, of different sutures and use the theta L to represent the weakness. As you can see, although the scales could be from the nanometers to the centimeter, but something is very common. For the for the flora species, for the flora species, if you look at the the uh, the, the numbers of here, here the region of the suture occupies much larger occupies much larger compared about uh, to the fauna species. For the fauna species, the suture regions occupies the very small regions of the building blocks, but for all the uh, Flora species they occupy much uh, higher region, and for the amplitude, you can see they have the different choice. Uh, what you can see here, the flora uh, species normally have higher theta uh, values, means that uh, they are not uh, they are less weighty compared to the to the to the to the, to the flora species. So why? And since we already have like uh, the analytical models. So now I could say I can answer these uh, questions uh, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, not quite well, but could answer this question in certain uh, conditions. So here I would like to list to you my parametric space for the engineering designs, and the theta values could be from 10, 20, and for the 40s. For the four species, the theta is very close to the 20 degrees. So this is how the four species to uh, in order to obtain the same or high uh, effective thinness, what they do. Since the combinations of the fauna species could be much higher, the stiffness ratios could be much higher, so they can use very less, less regions of the suture. So L over square root roots S normally is smaller in the designs. However, in order to achieve the same equivalent designs, for the flora species, uh, for the plant, they do not have too much uh, choice for their materials. So the stiffness uh, uh, ratios is pretty low, but they can use the large, I mean, that uh, uh, suture regions to achieve almost the equivalent uh, uh, stiffness as the, as the animal did. So this is like uh, the, the ways uh, for you to understand how the nature to guide the designs. Although, I mean, that up to now, we 
have the analytical models to understand it. But nature is much smarter than us. They already use these uh, these guidelines to design their their features. Uh, especially in the nature conditions, you have very limited material source. You do not have too much choice. This is like some optimized solutions for the different species in the different environmental conditions. So yes, that's like the pretty of all of my uh, course today. To first start to introduce you about the FDM 3D printer and how to use this. Uh, uh, I mean, that's a 3D printer to evaluate, uh, you know, to understand the material mechanical behaviors of it is. And then I use like the polyet technologies, uh, uh, much higher any solutions to illustrate you how we use the anti manufacturing to design some unusual, I mean, that's a very, very nice, I and mean, that's materials that have very high structure, utilities, uh, performance uh, for future industrial applications. So that's it. And uh, yes, thank you very much for your for your attentions and welcome any questions from you. Thank you.